welcome back to the channel Marco Collective Gamer 77 or Marco CG 77 today we'll be doing a review of the arcade one-up X-Men cabinet which includes X-Men Captain America and the Avengers and Avengers Galactic Storm here you see some outer shots of the box along with the inner packaging it's packaged very well at about 104 pounds so quite a big hefty boy Next up, we've got a quick shot of control panel, and to start things off, I will be addressing some of the concerns with the sound effects, or should I say the sound quality, that was presented in one of the reviewers' RGT85's video. The upcoming video that I'll be showing will be from RetroArch, and here's what that sounds like. So as you can see in here, there were definitely some scratchiness to the voice samples, and that actually is consistent on RetroArch, the Pandora box, and of course here on the Arcade 1UP. So that is definitely one area of contention that I have with RGT85's review video of the X-Men Arcade 1UP game. Um, again, this is a one, one thing I do have to preface is that I did play the volume at 13. Now, if you are playing on even higher uh, volume level, maybe that might scratch it up a bit more, but at least based on what I played at 13, uh, it was more than loud enough, and it scratched only when playing those, those voice samples. Um, other than that, it was fine. Now, I will say at 11 or 10, it is a little soft in regards to the volume level itself. So I do recommend playing it at 12 or 13. That was seemed to be right, the right uh, kind of a sweet spot for me. Uh, it does, uh, two of the games do have uh, online play. So you do have online play with X-Men. You also have it with Captain America and the Avengers. I honestly don't recall if it was on the Avengers Galactic Storm. I only tried it for a little bit and I just could not play it thanks to the controls. Um, as you can see here, yeah, I'm playing X-Men, I do have Scanlines on, and had a blast. Uh, this was actually the single player kind of video portions that I was doing, but was able to play online with other people. The most that I played with was two other players, so three players all together. The nice thing for the X-Men cabinet versus the Simpson cab is you don't have to be affixed to the position on the control panel in order to select the character. You can actually select between the different six different uh, characters to choose from from any joystick, which is, which is very nice. One thing that you do have to stay on, however, is if you're joining a game and say you're playing or using the two-player joystick and buttons and you're joining a game and maybe that person is using the two-player joystick and buttons, you actually have to use a different control stick and buttons than the other folks that's already in the game. So for example, one of the games I joined had a player basically on the second player and the third player joystick, so I joined in on the first player. 
Uh, so that is one thing that, uh, that you do have to do when playing these games. It doesn't really tell you the milliseconds in regards to the connection speeds with uh, when you're playing this game. I did choose North America as far as my main lobby. Um, and predominantly for a game with three players all together, so myself and two other people, I faced no lag whatsoever. There were no hiccups. Uh, the only hiccup that I could see was when another player joined, and that really was over after about two seconds or so. Um, the game itself is a standard Konami quarter muncher. It's definitely made to suck up your quarters. The hit detection is better than the turtles, but definitely not as crisp or as good as, say, Final Fight or some of the later um, side-scroller beat-em-ups like, say, the Dungeon and Dragons Shadows Over Mysteria um, on the Ar uh, Capcom Arcade Cabin. Uh, sorry, Capcom Arcade is what I meant to say. But still, for its time, plays very well, and of course having the graphics and taken from both the comic books and you know, a little bit from the, the show itself, this was a huge blast to play. One of the main reasons why I picked up this cabinet is, of course, nostalgia. And I think really that's where Arcade 1UP really has their forte. They know that nostalgia sells, and that's why you know, you're know you seeing the massive sales where they can have 1 to 2 million sales on Arcade Cabinet, um, even if they're only offering 1 to possibly 3 or 4 games. Um, this game itself, I remember playing with my good friend Zeus, Demetrios, and also Isaac Morris way back when. Uh, goodness, at Wild Waves Water Park. Uh, just because, of course, you know, back in those days, arcade cabinets were hugely expensive. And, of course, you can only dream of having it. Uh, and then that version at the time, I remember, was the four-player cabinet. They actually didn't have any of the six players, at least on any of the arcades that I can remember growing up. So for me, that uh, was a huge nostalgia factor, which is why I picked up Simpsons, which is why I picked up X-Men, why I picked up Teenage Mutant Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, as all the arc those arcade cabs were completely just entrenched in my heart and ingrained in my mind growing up um, as a, a teen, preteen. So I love those games and had to have them for my personal collection. If you were to tell me as a you know child back then or a kid back then that one day I would actually have this and it would fit in the house, and even though it's not the full size game. I would have been looked at you probably in awe and definitely some doubt. Um, the gameplay itself, I mean, it's a short game. It's really about anywhere from 30 minutes to about 45 minutes. In one session with one of the top players currently on the boards, um, we basically beat it in about 35 minutes. And then another gameplay session I joined was actually going a little faster because they literally spammed the credit button. And I think... The second and third player had between three to five hundred lives, so they just kept spamming the mutant powers, die, spam mutant powers, die. So while it was cool to see all the special effects and see all the the, the kill numbers rack up when you're trying to defeat these henchmen, it, it got a little boring. Um, so I only played for my five lives and, and I kind of leapt out. Um, as short as the game is, it's it's definitely a fun walk back. What really makes it a lot of fun, though, however is the fact that it is on, on, on live. It does have a live service attached to it that's free, that is fairly lag free. Um, one gripe I did have, the default setting when you're either joining or trying to join a game is dependent on that person's settings. I need to figure out which settings lets anybody just drop in and out because right now for about half of the folks that I joined where maybe they weren't ranked on the board, it was actually annoying because you had to wait for them to accept you into the game and sometimes in the heat of gameplay they, they're not pressing the live button to accept you in and you might just you know get timed out or, or get tired of waiting so the two times I did try and where that that option was there where I had to ask for permission to be able to be accepted I waited about 10 seconds and honestly I got tired of waiting I just wanted to play the game however that said with playing some of the other um, players that are a bit higher up in the rankings or maybe in your top 20 uh, they've got it set where if you're joining at least for the ones that I played with they've got it set where you can just drop in it automatically loads you in it's only about a hiccup or two on their end but otherwise no problem and it is nice to be able to just 
plunk in as many credits and lives as needed. Some of the bosses here uh, are pretty standard Konami beat em ups. They're they're definitely quarter munchers. Uh, to you know, to tell you the truth, not as bad as the the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade game, but it's definitely there. And there's a quick blurb that you see that uh, somebody wanted to accept, and I was of course in the middle of fighting. So I pressed the live, tried to have them accept, and of course they got tired of waiting and, and left as well. So again, I gotta figure out how to get that uh, set so they just drop in and drop out when needed. Um, still, that was definitely a good highlight, made the game a lot of fun. Also had the six characters to choose from. Personally, my two favorites are Nightcrawler and Colossus, just because their special mutant power really helps to clear uh, the room. Nightcrawler especially can clear up the screen with his special. Now for Cyclops, you can sort of do that. It's a little more specialized. They do have to be grouped together. Wolverine, they definitely have to be grouped together. Um, I actually have not played Storm and Dazzler much, so I have to go back and play and remember what their specials are like. I mainly played uh, Cyclops, Nightclaw um, Nightcrawler, Wolverine, and Colossus. I do have to try Storm and Dazzler as well. Overall, still very fun game, and again, for me, it's the big nostalgia factor. All right, next up, you've got Captain America and the Avengers from Data East. Now, this game only came out, I believe, only about a year or two before X-Men, and it's amazing how much the beat-em-up games have changed, but I remember loving this as a kid as well. I played this at the arcade uh, that was over at Northgate Mall here in uh, Seattle, Washington, and remember I played a lot of this game because it was only a quarter of play so it wasn't too bad. The, of course the graphics, the characters are, are much smaller. Um, there is a little bit of finesse and with this one you don't get to pick which characters you get to choose from from the control panel. So for example if you're one player you have to be Vision. If you're two player you have to be Cap uh, Iron Man. If you're three player you have to be Captain America and fourth player is Hawkeye. Um, it is nice that there, you know, since the characters are small, there's definitely a lot more room on the stage, but it was definitely more of a limitation of the hardware at that time, really only being a year or two out from, say, Konami's X-Men or Konami's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which is why when, so, which is, I may go back a little bit, which is why when uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and X-Men came out, those were quite a hit because this was the type of game that you would see when it came to side-scrolling beat-em-up type games where the characters were much smaller they weren't quite as large as X-Men or Teenage Mutant Turtles so when you you know went from this to say X-Men it, it was quite a jump for again only being about a year or so later this game is still pretty fun for me uh, I did come out on the Super Nintendo and the Genesis uh, but of course the voice samples were reduced the, scar the screen itself was smaller so it wasn't quite arcade perfect but definitely more than playable on both the Super Nintendo and the Genesis. The Genesis one though did suffer from only being able to have 64 colors on screen so it wasn't as good of a translation. Um, as far as the arcade one-up version it's exactly the same you know the, again for this time the sound bites are scratchy they're gonna be scratchy for, the, for these old games that's just how they were back in the day. Um, gameplay is actually not too bad, you know, you got the attack button, a jump button, pressing both but does your special, so for example, Vision does his uh, mind blast, Iron Man has his, uh, basically his optic blast, sorry, his, uh, goodness, I forgot what it is, repulsor blast, that's what it was. Um, and if you jump up in the air, press down and attack, he'll either do a downward punch, or he'll do a uh, repulsor blast from his fifths. So, still, some gameplay, you know, variety there. Of course, Captain America throws his shield, Hawkeye has his arrows. But still a lot of fun to play uh, for this old older game. Definitely still worth uh, a play and a pickup. Unfortunately, not a lot of people are playing this game online, so more than likely, you'll be f playing folks locally versus online. X-Men was definitely more of the draw. I also did want to show this section, which kind of broke up the monotony of the side-scrolling beat-em-up version. So there's also some sections where you are flying. So for characters that can fly, like Iron Man and Vision, they fly by themselves and it becomes basically a very, very light shooter. Um, Captain America and Hawkeye will actually be flying like a hover cycle um, in order to, to be at this stage and fires from those cycles as well. 
and last but certainly in this case least is the Avengers Galactic Storm fighting game. Um, and like most people, I never played this game uh, at all. I, I honestly can't even recall any arcade that had it. Uh, as you can see here, they're basically utilizing the kind of CG pre-rendered kind of sprites and graphics. Unfortunately, just not very well animated. Even for its time or back in the day, I would say it's animation wise, it's fairly similar to Ragnarok, which is on the SNK on Neo Geo MVS or AES or on Neo Geo CD. But at least Ragnarok plays a little bit better than this as far as when it comes to the gameplay itself. There is, of course, as you saw, a story mode or a versus mode. If you choose a story mode, you do have kind of a tag player that kind of come in and help fight with you and you can actually choose who those are and of course it's got a pretty standard versus mode as well there's really not a lot of characters there's about six characters you can choose from um, honestly it's kind of a throwaway and I, if there was one knock um, besides of course the price for the current arcade one-up cabinets it would be addition of this game um, I can think of many other games that would have been a better fit for this cabinet like say Sunset Riders or possibly go ahead and adding uh, Punisher to this to this gameplay since they already have it licensed on Capcom and it's in a lot there are other cabinets as well why not include it here um, sure it'd be another beat-em-up but at least those you know it'd be a, a better game to have a, as a third game but also would have, would have lo again loved to see Sunset Riders on this especially at four players or another say Konami four-player game like Bucky O'Hare would have been a, a good addition as well. Uh, honestly, this is the weakest uh, of the of the three um, as part of this collection. Now, to, to really kind of summarize and sum things up as far as this whole Konami arcade one up for the X Men. Um, honestly, I I'm pretty happy with it. I get the main thing, of course, again, is still that nostalgia factor, and which is why I bought it. It definitely has awesome side art. It looks like the arcade. Uh, Except for the monitor, of course, the mo they made some concessions in order, of course, to, to have it fit. It's not the split screen like they had with the six players. There are rumors and rumblings in the last week or so that they might be releasing a six player. I believe, uh, was it 19K made a custom six player camera, which looks pretty sweet. So that may happen down the line, but fortunately for me, I, I don't really have a lot of room anyway, and I hate to think what price I'm going to be asking for that one. The really only gripe besides this game is the price of the current arcade one-up cabinets. Um, this one is $6.99. Honestly, I think it should only be $4.99. The live play piece is nice, but you know, $4.99 was NBA Jam, and that had three games as well. Um, so I think honestly, $4.99, that's what it should be. Uh, I still am pretty mad that arcade one-up is using the reason of either the shipping lines or materials to increase the cost. That is still a, a negative for me and I really don't believe in that. And in fact in some areas you they're actually asking $749 for this cabinet so definitely shop around. The only negative it's only coming in one set with the light debt protector and the stool for that $699 amount or possibly $749. They didn't at least for right now release another uh, without the bar stool, without the light deck protector to drop down the price. At least with the Simpsons, you could have gotten it from Walmart for $5.29 if you're lucky to have that and they didn't cancel your order. So still for me, as a nostalgia gamer, from my childhood, this was still worth a pickup. Um, again, thanks to the new prices with Arcade 1UP, um, this uh, and possibly one or two more unless they you know drop down in price and I magically have more room are pretty much going to be the last uh, of my arcade one-ups. So the next one I'm up is going to be The Big Blue and Killer Instinct. And after that, maybe next year if they actually do Time Crisis or House of the Dead with a 20-inch screen. But thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.